Have you tried to incubate some eggs, but you had a really poor hatch rate and you're wondering what exactly went wrong? Well, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through some things that you can do to troubleshoot your hatch rate so you can address them in the future and have a much better hatch rate going forward. So stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Redneck video. Again, my name is Chris, and if you're not familiar with my channel, I help you to produce your own eggs, meat, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage like we're in today, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's what you want to do. Um, I just got done incubating some eggs. You can probably see behind me here, I've got my brooder box with uh, my hens or my chicks anyway that just hatched out. There's, I don't know, 17 or so of them in there. And then I've got my incubator right here and I brought this out here because um, I've got several eggs. Uh, you probably can't see it from there, but I'll bring you in close. Several eggs that just have not hatched and I'm going to go do some egg autopsies and see if I can figure out what went wrong so I know what to address going forward. Let me bring the camera in close. We'll show you exactly what I'm going to do and exactly how that's going to work. All right, so you can see I've got quite a few eggs that didn't hatch here. I've got a little styrofoam bowl so I can just throw it away when I'm done. And really it's pretty simple. I've got a knife here too and what I'm going to use that for is just to break the eggs. Kind of break them around the edges so I can get into them. This one feels like it may have something in it. Let's see. And maybe not. Let's find out. Nope, no bird. No embryo. Just a, uh, looks like an unfertilized egg. And that's what I'm hoping for in most of these situations. Let's try another one. And again, looks like there's no uh, no chick in there, so an unfertilized egg. Oh, now there we go. Can you see this is a partially developed embryo? I know this is kind of disgusting. Partially developed embryo, and it's going to smell bad. But this is an egg that did not develop for whatever reason. Give me a minute here, and we'll talk about those reasons. All right, so I got finished with autopsy and all those eggs. I had three total that had partially developed chicks in them. The rest of them, no development whatsoever. That, in my situation, probably indicates that they weren't fertile to begin with. Um, it could also indicate uh, poor storage. If you didn't store them properly, you stored them too long, um, you put them in the refrigerator to store them, any of those kinds of things where it kills the embryo before it ever has a chance to develop. Those could be issues with that as well. Um, I've got some videos on how to store eggs properly, so if you need that, then uh, check it out up here and you'll be able to go watch that video. All right, so the eggs that did kind of develop, the embryos that kind of developed, they didn't develop much, and you probably saw that in the video, there wasn't much of an embryo there, just kind of some goo, really. So that means they died pretty early on in the incubation process. Now that could be anything from poor genetics, um, some kind of disease, some kind of bacteria, but more than likely what that's gonna indicate is that you had your incubation temperature a little too high or maybe a little too low, um, and that could kill off some of your uh, birds. Uh, it could be humidity problems, but that early in the hatch rate, probably not. Most likely it's going to be a temperature issue, just a half a degree or a degree too high or half a degree or a degree too low. Now you can kind of couple that with how did your birds hatch. So if your birds started hatching early, you know, I'm incubating quail, they should start hatching on at about day 17, day 18. But I've had them hatch out as early as day 15 before. And if they start hatching on day 15, that means your incubation temperature is probably just a little bit too high. You need to get some calibrated thermometers, meat thermometers put in there, check your incubation temperature and make sure that your incubator incubator is reading the correct temperature readings. If you have birds that hatch late, so instead of hatching out on day 18, they start hatching out on day 20, 21, or 22. If that's when the majority of your birds hatch, then your incubation temperature is probably a little too low. And that can cause some of your eggs to die as well. That would cause almost fully developed chicks in most cases, but they never pip the shell, they never get out of it. Another thing you may want to look at is if you have a bunch of eggs that fully developed but never got out of the shell, never pipped the shell, or maybe they pipped the shell but couldn't quite get out, couldn't quite break it, is a look at the diet. There is a chance that if you're, especially if you're giving uh, calcium supplements to your birds, if they're getting too much calcium, the eggshells are just too thick and too hard for the birds to be able to get out of. Um, it could indicate some kind of genetic issue as well, but more than likely it's either going to be temperature settings or, like I said, you're adding dietary calcium, they're getting too much calcium and the eggshells are too hard for the birds to get out of. If you have birds that have pipped the shell, 
but died inside the shell and are very dry, well, then that indicates that maybe you opened the incubator during uh, incubation during the lockdown period, that your humidity levels were too low, especially over a prolonged period of time during lockdown. So the egg, what happens is the chick will pip that egg, break that air sac, and then the dry air causes it to get shrink wrapped inside the, inside the egg and it can't get out. And it basically just dies inside the egg. And those are a few things that you can kind of keep an eye out for, probably the most common things that you're going to run into with a poor hatch rate. Nine times out of ten, a poor hatch rate is going to relate back to the temperature setting on your, on your thermometer. It's either running higher than what it's reading or it's running lower than what it's reading. So get a calibrated thermometer, double check that. The second thing to look at would be the humidity. Is your humidity staying high enough, especially during the uh, lockdown phase? Because that's where the, the eggs tend to get uh, shrink wrapped kind of inside their shells if you're not carrying high enough humidity. So those are the two main things to look at. Um, after that would be, of course, like I said, dietary. If you're adding extra calcium and making their shells hard, any of those kinds of things. Um, and then you might look at some things like uh, poor genetics or disease being introduced in. You always want to make sure that after any hatch, you thoroughly clean and sterilize your incubator. Um, and that will prevent any kind of disease issues from carrying over. All right, so there's a few things that you can look for with a failed hatch so you know what to kind of troubleshoot for the next hatch. Let me know in the comments below. Is there something I forgot to mention? Is there something else that you do when it comes to troubleshooting a failed hatch? And if you don't do this on a regular basis, read the comments section below. There's a lot of conversation that goes on there, and you'll learn a lot from my viewers the way that I do. So thank you guys very much for watching this video, and as always, God bless.